Daily Words of God When Moses struck the rock, and the water bestowed by Jehovah sprang forth, it was because of his faith. When David played the lyre in praise of me, Jehovah, with his heart filled with joy, it was because of his faith. When Job lost his livestock that filled the mountains and untold masses of wealth, and his body became covered in sore boils, it was because of his faith. When he could hear the voice of me, Jehovah, and see the glory of me, Jehovah, it was because of his faith. That Peter could follow Jesus Christ was down to his faith. That he could be nailed to the cross for my sake and give glorious testimony was also down to his faith. When John saw the glorious image of the Son of Man, it was down to his faith. When he saw the vision of the last days, it was all the more because of his faith. The reason why the so-called multitudes of the Gentile nations have obtained my revelation and have come to know that I have returned in the flesh to do my work among men is also because of their faith. All those who are smitten by my harsh words and yet are brought solace by them and who are saved, have they not done so because of their faith? People have received so much because of their faith, and it is not always a blessing. They may not receive the kind of happiness and joy that David felt, or have water bestowed by Jehovah as Moses did. For example, Job was blessed because of his faith, but he also suffered disaster. Whether you are blessed or suffer disaster, both are blessed events. Without faith, you would not be able to receive this work of conquest, much less see Jehovah's deeds displayed before your eyes today. You would not be able to see, much less would you be able to receive. These scourges, these calamities, and all the judgments, if they did not befall you, would you be able to see Jehovah's deeds today? Today, it is faith that allows you to be conquered, and it is being conquered that allows you to believe in Jehovah's every deed. It is only because of faith that you receive such chastisement and judgment. Through this chastisement and judgment, you are conquered and perfected. Without the kind of chastisement and judgment you are receiving today, your faith would be in vain, because you would not know God. No matter how much you believed in Him, your faith would remain but an empty expression ungrounded in reality. It is only after you receive this work of conquest, work which makes you completely obedient, that your faith becomes true and reliable, and your heart turns toward God. Even if you suffer great judgment and imprecation because of this word, faith, you nonetheless have true faith, and you receive the truest, most real, and most precious thing. This is because it is only in the course of judgment that you see the final destination of God's creations. It is in this judgment that you see that the Creator is to be loved. It is in such work of conquest that you behold the arm of the Creator. It is in this conquest that you come to fully understand human life. It is in this conquest that you gain the right path of human life and come to understand the true meaning of man. It is only in this conquest that you see the righteous disposition of the Almighty and His beautiful, glorious countenance. It is in this work of conquest that you learn of man's origin and understand all mankind's immortal history. 
It is in this conquest that you come to comprehend mankind's ancestors and the origin of mankind's corruption. It is in this conquest that you receive joy and comfort as well as endless chastening, discipline, and words of reproach from the Creator to the mankind He created. It is in this work of conquest that you receive blessings as well as the calamities that are man's due. Is this not all because of your little bit of faith? And did your faith not grow after you gained these things? Have you not gained a tremendous amount? Not only have you heard God's word and seen God's wisdom, but you have also personally experienced each step of his work. Maybe you would say that if you did not have faith, then you would not suffer this kind of chastisement or this kind of judgment. But you should know that without faith, not only would you be unable to receive this kind of chastisement or this kind of care from the Almighty, but you would also forever lose the opportunity to meet the Creator. You would never know the origin of mankind and never comprehend the significance of human life. Even if your body died and your soul departed, you still would not understand all the Creator's deeds, much less would you know that the Creator did such great work on earth after He made mankind. As a member of this mankind that He made, are you willing to ignorantly fall into darkness in this way and suffer eternal punishment? If you separate yourself from today's chastisement and judgment, what is it that you will meet with? Do you think that once separated from the present judgment, you will be able to escape from this difficult life? Is it not true that if you leave this place, what you will encounter is painful torment or cruel abuses inflicted by the devil? Might you encounter unendurable days and nights? Do you think that just because you escape this judgment today, you can forever evade that future torture? What will come your way? Can it really be the Shangri-La that you hope for? Do you think you can escape that future eternal chastisement simply by running away from reality as you do now? After today, will you ever be able to find this kind of opportunity and this kind of blessing again. Will you be able to find them when disaster befalls you? Will you be able to find them when all of mankind enters into rest? Your present happy life and that harmonious little family of yours, can they substitute for your future eternal destination? If you have true faith, and if you gain a great deal because of your faith, then all of that is what you, a created being, should gain, and also what you should have had in the first place. Nothing is more beneficial to your faith and life than such conquest.